We are the People's Open Network, empowering communities to build and operate their own wireless networks beyond the scope of what a last mile ISP like Comcast or AT&T would offer. Members of the People's Open Network have developed our own open wort based firmware with the Babel Mesh Routing Protocol, which we name SudoWort. We're using SudoWort to build out a community-owned and operated mesh network in Oakland, California. Here's how we create a new node to add to the mesh. First, we download the latest firmware. Reset the router to its default state. Configure your computer's network settings to match the default settings on the router. Go to the default IP address. Browse to the firmware and upload the file. Wait for the exciting countdown. Configure your network settings to communicate with your new network. Go to its IP address and log in. On the home page, if you have an existing ISP connection, you can choose how much bandwidth you share with the public network. The default is 4 megabits per second. The bandwidth you share is available on the open peoplesopen.net SSID. On the Wi-Fi settings page, you can set the name and password of your private network. If we connect to this private network and run the command babbled-i, we can see all the other nodes on the network. The connections page shows you all the devices connected to your node. Devices can connect to either the private or public network over Wi-Fi or Ethernet. Devices connected to the public people's open network or to the USB port can host local services, such as peer-to-peer -peer file sharing, social networking, or local maps. If we connect to the public network and run traceroute, we see that our traffic is routed through an exit node, a server co-located at local ISP Hurricane Electric that's owned and maintained by Sudamesh volunteers. The two outer Ethernet ports, one and four, are for extender nodes. Extender nodes are directional, long-range, point-to-point devices that can be mounted on rooftops. Extender nodes connect distant, isolated home nodes together, while home nodes spread the signal omnidirectionally for local use. For instance, up in North Oakland, People's Open Network member Chuck has an extender node mounted on his chimney that's connected to a home node, sharing a portion of his ISP's bandwidth. Chuck is sharing this connection with his neighbors down the street, Mary Jo and Terry, who also have a node mounted to their chimney. Over in West Oakland, a cluster of hacker houses have been testing our firmware, experimenting with the network, and sharing their internet for nearly five years. Down in East Oakland, a community-owned space has agreed to participate in the network. We plan to set up an extender node pointing to the village a tiny house encampment home to several dozen formerly unhoused families and elders. We'll also mount another node pointing north to the hills for future rooftop-to-rooftop -rooftop links into the rest of the network, which will connect to two major sources of donated bandwidth from Paxio in downtown Oakland and the Internet Archives Tower in Richmond. But building a successful community mesh network entails far more than physical and technical infrastructure. Equally important to internet access is practicing good security hygiene, digital literacy skills, and possessing devices with which to connect to the network. To this end, members of SudoMesh collaborate with SudoRoom, the community hackerspace in which we reside, to host monthly digital security workshops, fix and distribute donated laptops to those in need, and generally serve as a source of support, learning, and education, free and open to all.